This is the Hiking Through Life podcast. We've all been gifted a journey called life. Let's see where the journey leads us today. Welcome to the Hiking Through Life podcast, where we talk with people who in some way, shape, or form have been influenced by the outdoors. I'm Andy, the producer of this podcast, and my lovely wife, Sarah, will be your host. Together, we make up Hiking Through Life. This podcast is all about bringing all kinds of people who are inspired by the outdoors and sharing their stories. We hope that by sharing people's stories, it inspires others to get out and live a more meaningful life. Tune in every week for new episodes, or better yet, subscribe to the Hiking Through Life podcast on your favorite podcast provider. If you enjoy this podcast, please share it with others. Also, if you have a story to share or know of anyone who might be interested in being a guest on this podcast, head on over to hikingthroughlife.net slash podcast and get in touch with us. Now sit back and enjoy this week's episode. Welcome to the Hiking Through Life podcast. In this episode, we take another adventure to the Boundary Waters. A couple episodes ago, we talked about the trip that Sarah and I took my nephew, Nolan, and his friend, Kalon. And this trip, we took a group of friends that we took last year for their very first times. So this was their second time up in the Boundary Waters. You can go back and check out that episode, episode three, Boundary Waters Newbies, to listen to their experience from last year. Later on in this episode, Sarah will take us through some fire talk chats that we had with them about their experience this year and how it differed from their first trip last year. Yeah, and I think you'll hear in the fire talk chats that this group, um, their first time, their reactions were just a lot more animated and reactive because you don't know what to expect the first time you come out into the Boundary Waters. You don't know what to expect the first time you do anything in life really and one thing that really stood out to me was Brittany will say something along the lines of each time you encounter something different you learn how to get through it and that's so true of coming out here every single trip is going to be different even if you go to the same places and do the same portages you're going to encounter different challenges and situations and struggles But the cool thing was that this group had already done that before. Once we were at camp, they knew how to set up. They knew how to cook. They brought their own food. So it was really cool to see the growth that this group made their second time around. Yeah, it's more some of the exterior elements that you can't even control out there that that make those experiences different. But some internal ones too, like pregnancy... This trip, we had two people pregnant, Sarah and Brittany, so it was quite a different experience for us compared to last year. So we had uh, to think more about safety. We had to think more about, you know, if we did need to leave the Boundary Waters, can we do it in a timely and safe manner? So we didn't go quite as far as we did even with Kayla and Nolan, um, in the week before this trip, we did do the same entry point at Liz Lake and we did stay at Rockwood Lodge before we went into the Boundary Waters. So that was very similar to our previous trip from the week before. However, it was new for this group of people. This year's trip was also a little bit easier for everyone because we only did three portages. So we started out at Rockwood Lodge and portaged to Liz Lake where we entered the Boundary Waters. And then we portaged to Caribou Lake. And from there we paddled across and portaged to Horseshoe Lake where we set up camp. Now we did have a little bit of issues finding a campsite just because the ones that we had planned to stay at were already occupied. So it was a little bit busier than we anticipated on Horseshoe for the middle of the week, but we did find a nice campsite and we had a great time. We did spend a little bit of time exploring some other lakes and fishing and just sitting around the campfire having that community and connection. 
Yeah, there was a lot of rest and relaxation this time um, since it was a longer trip than last summer and the weather was nicer. We were able to just lay out in the sun and just just be out in nature, which was what pregnant ladies need sometimes. It's what every human needs sometimes. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, while the ladies rested, the guys ended up fishing a lot from shore. It was very rocky where our campsite was, so we did get quite a few snags and lost a couple lures here and there, but we did catch fish the final night, so we got a little bit of fresh fish, which was always rewarding when you're up in the Boundary Waters. Yeah, Andy taught Joe how to fillet a fish, Yeah, and it tasted delicious. Yeah, it was. It was a good good teaching lesson and good learning on his part. And he did a great job filleting the fish for his first time. So one thing we talked about in our previous episode is just one thing you learned out in the Boundary Waters. And we didn't really necessarily ask this group. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, we we had some of that conversation last year during their first trip up. And you can check that out again on episode three of this podcast. But this Fire Talk Chats conversation that Sarah's about to get into here was more about what the differences were. And some of that, I mean, people did talk about some learning situations. But like Sarah started us off in this podcast, is that you always learn something and that nothing's ever the same up there. And that goes along with a lot of things in life. You know, you might encounter a similar situation, but there's always something a little bit different. And you'll find that you'll need to adapt, and it's not a bad thing. Adaptation is something that humans do very well, and that we are designed to do as creatures. And you kind of see that up there. You'll have to adapt to the weather. You'll have to adapt to the conditions on the water. You'll have to adapt to your surroundings. Maybe there's campsites that are occupied like we ran into, so we had to adapt our plan. We had to adapt our original plan, too, when we found out that Sarah and Brittany were both going to be pregnant during this trip. So I think it's beneficial that we take that time to view those situations in which we need to adapt as learning experiences and embrace them. And with that, I think we'll get into what was different from people's first times to what it was now on this trip. What they learned, how they made those adaptations in their planning, in their paddling, and we'll get into fire talk chats. Good evening. Welcome to fire talk chats with hiking through life. We are back in the Boundary Waters with the crew that we brought last summer. Mm-hmm. Last summer, it was their very first time ever in the Boundary Waters. And they came back for round two, so that is a positive. And we've had a great time. Um, we're sitting by the fire. It's our last night. We finally got some fish. I shouldn't say we. It was actually only Joe. So thanks, Joe. No problem. Good luck. Uh, it was all luck. <laughs> so super excited about that. Um, and we're kind of just reflecting on the differences of being a first timer in the Boundary Waters versus your second trip. So we're gonna kind of let everyone chat about that. I know, like my first trip, it was like. I don't know, Andy and I came out here on our own, didn't really have anyone telling us what to do. We were outdoorsy people and we just went for it and it was challenging. Our first portage was a mess. We had little things everywhere. So you learn something every time you come out here. Yeah, but your first trip is definitely the biggest learning curve. No doubt about that. Mm -hmm. So let's hear from Joel. Biggest, um, just, yeah, difference, share. I would say biggest difference is the confidence in what you're bringing. Just because Mm -hmm. after the first trip, you kind of go through this big, huge, like you said, challenge of like, okay, what do I bring? What should I bring? And then, you know, once we've kind of 
sat down with all that gear and whatnot and kind of realized, you know what, we didn't even touch this. So you don't bring it. Um, and then you think about the other things that, oh man, I wish I would have had an extra pair of socks or, you know, something like that. Especially like this go around, it was a lot colder than um, last year. So I think everybody's like really happy that they brought extra layers and things like that. Chilly. But yeah, then I think also just part of it is like the mental game of it is that we know you know being out on the water it can definitely be um things change pretty quickly so being aware of that ahead of time i think is definitely better um than the first go around because i think for all of us when you hop into a canoe with a bunch of gear and you start going across the lake and then you get hit with a brunt of wind it really throws you off and even though in this day and age or this trip anyways um when it does happen it still kind of throws you off but you're a little bit more prepared for it and how to counteract it what about you b yeah so i would say this is bailey here i would say um kind of by, based off of what joel said knowing that we have that teamwork factor within our whole group um we've all been together one time before and it went well and so just kind of knowing each other's personalities and um, being in stress stressful situations together knowing that we can pull through um, especially with your canoe partner it's not that oh can we do this but it's like okay we can do this we just have to tune into that synchronous feeling together um, and then I would also say too just having the ability to anticipate dangerous situations and think ahead a little bit more I know this year we were more planned with you know, some first aid supplies and just really thinking ahead of situations that we've already been through and thinking ahead of things that could quickly go dangerous and knowing maybe how to counteract them a little bit more. We're not so worried about, okay, is our tent set up? You know, like the little things that are basic to us now, now we can really anticipate more things. And I feel like that just brings more of a safety sense um, since we're aware of that we're more prepared and then you can just enjoy yourself more when you do have that safer sense of how to respond to emergency situations off to Brittany hi this is Brittany um, I think the biggest difference for me from last year to this year would be just knowing what to expect and I know last year I had I was really anxious and just didn't know exactly what portaging was and everything. So this year it was nice to know kind of what we were going to be doing and that really helped. So, and also, you know, last year we had, we had a lot of rain that was difficult and cold. And so I think I was expecting that this year, like being prepared for that, but we didn't have any rain. So that was nice. But instead we had, um, you know, really big kind of waves. It was really choppy as we were coming in with the canoe. And so I feel like each time we're out here, we encounter something different that we learn how to get through. And um, just like Sarah said, we just keep on learning, <laughs> learning new things. So it's been really fun. And we got to eat fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joey. <clears throat> this is uh, Joey. Um, let's say one of the things that is different from last year. Well, I was going to say that. Um, <laughs> that my wife is pregnant. And I think I have in the past always have been concerned about safety. But um, as of now, I am uh, trying to be more attentive to her needs and cares because it's very important even if you were not pregnant but yeah just being a team but what's different i mean we're at a different site first off and uh it was a different route coming in same people though and i think we've learned things uh we we all kind of vibe with the same kind of jokes and personalities and i think we find that uh fun to be around and uh, that's the kind of cool part is that we're all different but we're all kind of the same in a sense and we're all around the same age so that's what I really like 
I'm going to hand it off to, well, Andy, he's got a hot pan in his hand and <laughs> he's very good at balancing it and not dropping it. So I think <laughs> back, to, back, to back to Sarah, handing off to the guy with boiling water in his hand. Not a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say that this time around, it was really awesome that everybody contributed food. Like last year, Andy and I did all the food planning and cooking, which we knew we were going to do coming in and bringing newcomers. Like that was, that was our job. That's what we wanted to do. But this time it was super cool because people brought their own stuff and like we got to see what other people's ideas were and just like see them use their outdoor skills. And we made brownies tonight <laughs> and we had fettuccine Alfredo one night and apple crisp. And we made like a creation last night with kind of a hodgepodge of things. So it was just really fun to mix everybody's food together and again work as a team we've become a really good team and now andy's back and doesn't have boiling water so andy can share now well last year before our trip even started i mean we had both the couples over and we went through all the different gear what the trip was you know, what the expectations were for the trip and stuff like that. And so it was like a very um, big, I think, learning process for some and of what to expect. And then they got out there, experienced it firsthand. And this year was totally different because they kind of knew what to expect. So like we said in the past, I mean, they're already pros. It was awesome to just kind of get going and get out here and you know, portaging, we were just one after the other, and we got to our site pretty quickly after we found one. <laughs> there was a bit of a challenge finding one just because it was so busy on this lake this year. But, I mean, we had a great time, and um, it's always good to see people just, you know, improving their their skills out here and just us also expanding our connection with each other i think that's been a big thing with these trips too is just like i think someone earlier said uh we didn't really know each other last year mm -hmm. some of us mm -hmm. and this year was totally different and we connected even more this year so we're looking forward to continuing that too for some years to come, even with even with babies, babies in the family and <laughs> all that. Find some time at some point to make trips still happen, or other opportunities happen. Not necessarily Boundary Waters, but there's always other opportunities. So with that, we got a clear night. We're gonna do some stargazing. It was great to get together with everyone that last night around the fire and have that fire talk chats and just reminisce about the differences between the years and how we've come along in each of our own individual ways, but also as a group and the connections that we do have now with each other. I think it's awesome how people have more confidence in their abilities both out there and even beforehand, like we discussed a little bit too about how the first year we kind of sat everyone down, went through the whole trip itinerary, just kind of had a long session about what to bring, about what to expect up there. This year was very different. Everyone kind of knew, and they'd mentioned that too in that chat, about what they needed to bring what they didn't bring last year that they wish they would have had, and just kind of what to expect as far as conditions up there, how to portage, all of that. So it's it's really inspiring just to watch that growth and see that firsthand from year to year.
Definitely. And it brings a lot of anxiety off. Like when once you've done something once already, you don't have all that anxiety about the what ifs and the situations. You still do. Like even I still have those anxieties about like what if a bear comes what if a moose comes and a moose we did see a moose which was amazing like 30 feet away but when you know what you're getting into it just lifts off the pressure of a situation yeah the pressure of that situation and just i think everyone in the whole group can feel it too and sense that just real like calmness and we don't have to necessarily be as concerned about the other people behind us or in front of us. And, and helping people portage and getting in and out of the canoe and all of that. They just, they knew what to do. Right. It was just more of a very independent type of a experience. However, we do act as a team paddling. We do act as a group. But knowing that everyone has that independent confidence was definitely a, a different experience than the year before. So at that, I'm hoping that everyone out there gets to learn from their experiences and makes those adaptations as they come about. And with that growth, we'll all become better. Better people and better humans and better as a whole. Thanks for listening. We love sharing these stories with you through the Hiking Through Life podcast, and we're so grateful that you listen to this podcast. If you'd like to support the Hiking Through Life podcast further, we have these amazing new t-shirts and water bottles. The t-shirts come in four colors, and the water bottles are perfect for trails, adventuring, or daily use. Consider checking them out at hikingthroughlife.net slash shop. Use the code podcast and receive 10% off your first order. You've been listening to the Hiking Through Life podcast. Peace, love, and hike through life.